session, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Wu Ping Wu. He uh, got his uh, master and bachelor degree in China, but later he moved to the United States, so he got his PhD in the uh, University of Illinois. His topic is uh, biophysics, and he is also editor and also founder of the journal Christmas Time. So, the floor is yours, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank Professor Yen Ra, the uh, Sanctuary Carnival Foundation, the organizing committee of this uh, novel, and uh, to me, Pioneer Conference. And I also would like to thank the attendees, the speakers, and I learned personally a great deal uh, about the subject here we covered. The title of my talk is Experimental Evidence of Non-Local Gra Gravitational Effect and Nature of Gravity. And the work is done by me and my collaborator, Dr. Wu. She's sitting here and taking me. So I guess I can put on YouTube, more people can learn about the subject. We're part of a Quantum Dreaming. This is an R&D company we set up in the United States back in 2003. Uh, you can find all our papers at our personal website, quantumbrain.org. Here's the outline what I will try to cover within the 45 minutes or so I have. I'll start with why and when our experiments were conducted. Then we'll discuss the nature of quantum entanglement of gravity, both in the framework of mainstream science and also our own view. Then I will move to discuss our experimental design and the results we obtained with the water, the parameters we measured are uh, weight, temperature, and pH value. Then I'll go on to talk about how to reconcile the non-local effect we observe with the relativity <coughs> free space-time model of elementary particles. We give the lucky name, it's called the principle of existence. Then I want to talk a little bit about the quantum gravity in the uh, principle of existence. Then, if I have time, transition from quantum gravity to, ge to general relativity. Time will briefly cover the biological experiment we did with the with brain. Some. Now, why we, why we did this work? Our pro primary research our brain. It's uh, about how brain works. We we want to find. I mean, we study the nature of consciousness. This is a very important subject. So, to to us, I mean, I guess to everyone here, to to understand natural world, we first had to understand ourselves, the mind. How nature of mind is a great mystery of hydrogen science. So that's our main research. And so back in 2002, we put, put forward a hypothesis. It's called <coughs> spin mediated consciousness theory, which was later published in Medical Hypothesis in 2004. Briefly, in this spin mediated consciousness theory, that uh, the key point we have there is nuclear and our electron spin is a mind pixel. Consciousness is intrinsically related to the nuclear and our speed practices in the brain. And the unity of the mind is achieved by entanglement of the mind pixel. So we did the biological portion of our work in late 2004, then 2005, then we did the uh, water experiment. That's the main uh, topic of what we're going to cover today in 2006. Then we did another follow-up study back in 2012, uh, another biological study. As a side note to our theory, because that's our main subject, here's the key point of the key basis of spin is constant theory. Uh, the spin is the base of the qubit for encoding information. Nuclear spin has long relaxation time after excitation, which these times matches or exceed the time scale of brain Activity. Spin was shown to be responsible for all quantum effects in both Pistons, uh, that's also called the uh, Clifford algebra, 
formulation and Fermi mechanics, Fermi picture of the quantum mechanics. Uh, then also in relativistic quantum mechanics, spin is embedded in the uh, in the Dirac equation itself. I will uh, talk about this a little bit later. On the other hand, neural membranes and proteins contain vast, vast majority of uh, 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 nuclear spin, which that, that's proton, carbon-13, phosphate-31, natrium-15, which are natural targets of interaction with electromagnetic field. And lastly, nuclear long spin form complex spin networks inside the brain, which are modulated by action potential, as we shown in our paper. You can, you can find this paper in our what, what's that quantum brain dot org. Now I'm gonna first talk what is and how to generate the quantum entanglement in the mainframe, uh, uh, in the mainframe uh, mainstream science uh, physics. So I was quote Pomster, his article. It says, two or more quantum systems are said to be in an uh, entangled state if their joint wave function is not expressible as a product of individual wave function, but is inside a superposition of the product state. And he goes on to say, so whenever two quantum systems interact with each other, it is impossible that all factorable states remain factorable during interaction. So unless the four homogeneous does, does not couple this system, this system, that is to say, unless it do not interact. Here the theory, I mean the Schrodinger equation show you a joint system. Showing the Schrodinger equation of a joint quantum system A and B, their time evolution under a Hamiltonian with the interaction term. That now in water, uh, there's a proton, proton half, spin one half. There are both J company and the dipolar company within a water molecule. Uh, then in between water molecule, there are also uh, dipolar company. So through this, this is J company of two proton within a water molecule, between two water molecules, and also between two water molecules, this is a dipolar company. It can produce the famous uh, bow states of the spin. Uh, this is a product state A and B, up and down. And in superposition with the two joint states, down and up. Now there are two conceptual barriers to uh, whether we can apply quantum entanglement for, say, uh, instantaneous communication. One of them is called no communication uh, theory. Uh, the earliest, one of the earliest work done is in this uh, work listed here, entitled Quantum Field Theory Cannot Provide Faster Than Light Communication. And this is the mainstream view. The, the reason is that the uh, wave function are merely treated as a mathematical tool for calculating uh, uh, probabilities of where the, you know, the, each quantum state is. In the case of positions where the electron say, is located, so so now so the wave function is a pure mathematical tool. It represents what's called the probability ability. That's one of the problems. The other problem to utilize quantum entanglement is quantum decoherence. It's also <coughs> dilution of quantum entanglement. So basically, this is the loss of the quantum coherence within existing entangled entities, quantum entities through interaction with the environment. But this is not insurmountable. So how do we overcome no communication theory? I mean, there are also already discussed uh, here, I listed Brian Josephine, Henry Staff, and Ivan Walker, they discussed one way to try to achieve that is they assume the probability distribution may be modified. You know, you, so that's one way. Our view is the second, which is, you know, we can, one can go beyond the probabilistic, probabilistic interpretation of wave function and accept wave function to be a real entity. And, and it's quantum entanglement with other quantum entities to be able to produce observable uh, physical effect. Uh, we have an article on this in this journal. Well, then, most important thing, because empirical knowledge is king, right? We have theories, 
but the new theory is about imperial fact. So one go on about doing an experiment. So in, instead of measuring the human individual uh, quantum observer, such as spin up and down, polarization left and right, you try to measure the microscopic both uh, non-local effect. Now there's a second barrier is how to overcome quantum decoherence. Decoherence, well, there are people done work, uh, as I said here, decoherence subset doesn't exist in the, in, within Halbert space. I mean, quantum mechanics, we work in mathematical space called Halbert space. And uh, in this work, they shown both uh, by theory and in experiment, the bow states uh, for photon polarization for spin, actually the R, the bow state, the, the, the state I've shown, are uh, uh, decoherence resistant. They, 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 they're resistant to decoherence. And in case of nuclear spin, and many of you already know, compared with electron spin, it only weakly interacts with the environment. Its strength of interacting with the environment is about a thousand times weaker than, than electron spin. Thus, they have re long relaxation patients and time after citation. Actually, that is the reason why MMR is possible. There are both theoretical and experimental studies indicating large scale quantum coherence of entangled states in nuclear spin ensembles. Uh, here, you can look at reference in this article that we published. One, well, again, because imperial experience knowledge is king, so we want to do experiment. Let's see what I experiment say. Then we'll try to find what model will work. So, so here's our view beyond the mainstream view of, uh, of uh, what is quantum entanglement. So to us, quantum entanglement means genuine interconnectedness uh, and inseparableness of once interacting quantum entities can be directly sensed and utilized by the entangled quantum entity. Well, of course, Mac said much earlier, the whole universe is interconnected. And you don't assume his gravity actually is instantaneous. Second, we assume quantum entanglement can persist in biological, chemical, and other systems at room and high temperature. I mean, this is a thought experiment, but I, you know, you know that it can be shown in experiment. Then third, we assume quantum entanglement can influence chemical, biological reactions, other physical processes, micro and micro properties of all forms of matter. Now here's our view of um, uh, the origin and nature of uh, uh, gravity. This is maybe, actually, like I said, Mac and Newton already done so. I mean, Newton reluctantly assumed gravity is instantaneous. And Mac suggested all universe, all the matter in the universe are uh, interconnected. It's called have action at a distance. So our view about uh, uh, gravity, the gra gravity originated from non-special, non-temporal pre-space time. Actually, that's one of the reasons we found we found this journal in 2010. It's called Pre-Space Time Journal to cover the subject. Gravity's microscopic manifestation of quantum entanglement. Again, as I said, this is nothing new. It's, you know, Newton assumed, Mac already suggested. Potentially, gravity can be harnessed, tamed, and developed into revolutionary technologies such as instantaneous communication. So, how do we go testing about these new views? Ours and other authors may have similar views. Here, in our case, with water. If you do first, you do a, a solid experiment. <coughs> Try to quantum entangle quantum entities such as nuclear spin into a physical system. Then you assume if quantum entangle are created <coughs> and can persist on the decoherence, and one month, one month the the material manipulated, the physical property of the other, such as the weight, temperature, uh, pH value, may be affected through quantum entanglement needed non local processes. On the same token, one can try to quantum entangle quantum entities such as nuclear spin inside a biological system such as our own brain with those in the external sub chemical substances 
Then again, if we assume quantum atom are created time proceed, then the, the quantum entity associated with spin can be sensed and utilized in tandem such as the nuclear spin in our brain. So then the test subject may feel the effect of the external substance. Now then we do real experiment and because uh, real science we have to do experiment, you support your uh, your hypothesis. So these are the paper we did uh, based on the work we done 2005, 2006, three papers. It's listed here. And you can find all this on our website. Now I will talk to the water experiment first. These are the high precision instruments we use. Uh, here's a high precision balance. Its accuracy is 0 0.1 milligram. We have a high uh, precision uh, thermometer. Its uh, precision is 0 0.001. We also have a high precision pH meter. Again, its uh, uh, accuracy is 0 0.001. 001. And uh, here is the door uh, for holding liquid nitrogen where we freeze and manipulate the uh, uh, remote sample. And here is the pro uh, temperature probe, here is the pH probe. And uh, here is the, the experimental design of our wand experiment that will talk about the weight measurement uh, free saw treatment first. Okay, so if you have a bottle of cold spring water, say, uh, I've been sitting there for uh, you know, three months because they interact with each other. So at least in nuclear spin, they should be, when you separate them into two portions, the nuclear spin, because their long, uh, I mean, long coherent time should be still interact, uh, still be connected. So you take, say, 400 milliliter colon spring spray water with a shell time of 90 days. You put a portion into a plastic bottle to be put on the precision skill, uh, a balance, then the other half the portion to be freeze and then saw in the uh, in the uh, door, put the nitrogen in the container. Uh, by the way, this container is metal, so it serves as a Faraday cage, so whatever inside electromagnetic, electromagnetic wires, it should not communicate to outside this uh, metal container. And so here is the one set of experiments we've done on uh, weight experiment. Now you remember the effect are small. These are these are small events. So so it's a milligram amplified by ten, ten times. Okay, they are small events. They're not uh, you know, dramatic, but it's obviously there. So before you freeze freeze the uh, remote sample, you look for the national container. So the weight will like this, a fifth liter down. Immediately after you put the water sample in liquid nitrogen, you will see the weight measured by the balance starting decreases. So this is three set of sample. One, two of them down at 50 feet, one down at 500 feet. Uh, because this, this drifting, background drifting, it's a, because they're done in three separate experiments, so it's different, but you can see the increase of the weight loss. Now, after you take the water sample out of the liquid nitrogen, then the drifting, the rate of uh, weight loss stop. In two, in two cases, they're going back. In one case, it uh, slowed down. And here is a simple graph of what we uh, did, I mean, what with the experiment we did. So here is the no treatment control for sample is this, so this is general drift of the balance. And here in the freeze and saw treatment, six samples, freeze, you, you can see the increase of weight loss on the balance. And when you saw it slow down. Now here they are uh, designed for measure the uh, temperature change and uh, uh, weight, uh, weight change simultaneously. So take again the shop, the cold spring water with shower time, say 90 days. You split it into three portions. One small portion for measure temperature pH. The other portion, uh, precision balance, and the main portion to be manipulated in the, uh, in the liquid nitrogen container. And here is the 
one set of data showing showing the simultaneous wave change and the temporary change. Now wave change as, as, as I discussed before in this curve, you can see the increase of the wave loss. Again, the effects are small. And temporary change are also very small. This is Celsius amplified by a thousand times. Okay, the, the precision of our, our thermometers have that type of precision. So you can see the we would drift higher because of the environment. And then after, after the freezing started, I have a little jump, jumpy. And then it started going down. Now, I want you to start to saw the sample taking outside the liquid nitrogen, drift a little bit. So there is a lag as far as temperature is concerned. Very interesting for weight, there is no lag. You put in the sample into, uh, into the liquid nitrogen, you can see immediately it started drifting lower. Of course, the freezing process gradually, it's not suddenly all froze up because you put the bulk of water there. But the, the change is immediate. But the for temperature change, there's a lot before it reacts. Okay, so these experiments are done like 50 feet. Here's another sample I put them separately because the drifting of the temperature and the weight is all downside. Again, you can see weight about the same then. But soon you freeze. It was suddenly the drop, but this gradual reason in the sample the freezer cannot was not freezing immediately because the bulk of water is twenty some minutes later. So then again, if you take the sample out of the uh, liquid door, remove sample, it suddenly become it, it's coming back. Temperature again, this one not that obvious. There is a data lag, but I have more graphs showing you what's going on. Uh, I'm sorry. So this is. This is measuring temperature change separately. I will deal with temperature first, and then I will talk about the um, pH value change. Okay, so in this temperature measurement, we did uh, three things. One is control in an open environment. This is drifting on the background. <coughs> One is the another control or experiment. We, we put the sample into a, a thermal flask so that so that way the sample itself will not exchange uh, energy with the outside the environment. Then the other is a, then the other is a regular free soil in a plastic bottle. So this is drifting, this one set this is drifting of the uh, drifting of the background temperature. Uh, and this is a temperature with free free soil treatment. Again, you see the change have a little bit left. And the interesting thing in thermal flask, which is isolated from environment, you see that when you do free saw treatment, it stays stable. There is no effect seen. And here is a summary of um, multiple sample. Well, so this is a control. This is in thermal flask. And this is the, uh, the sample in plastic bottle with can exchange energy with the environment. And this is the pH value. So the setup is the same. We measure pH value change. And this is the thermal flask. It's, it's, when you freeze saw no effect, it's dripping down. This has no exchange with the environment. And this is the control dripping. And this is free saw. So once the free <coughs> start have a little bit left, then the pH value stop, R rate of decrease uh, uh, is the uh, uh, Decrease is, is it slow. Now when you saw again, again there's a little bit of lag is going back. So the overall the water is being measured to become more, a little bit more acidic. I'll quickly go through the next set of experiment. This is doing a pH value change, pH value change through a setup to show the effects actually being produced by quantum enamel. Here's a picture showing one way you can produce quantum enamel with a laser light. First, pass through the sample. Say, uh, this is uh, hydrochloride. It's a strong, pure. I mean, we use this constant acid. One light going through here, getting entangled with light entangled with the, the acid. Then, when pass through water sample, in this case, we we, use, we assume it's nuclear spin. Then, well, the light entangled with this sample first bring. Then also, when you interact with this, it get these. You can spin up in these two uh, 
container in Angular. This is not, it's called for like forward light scattering. This here is a reference that I uh, read up uh, there. So what we did is uh, in, re oh, this is in, the in reverse, okay? It's sample first. Then we will interact with sample first. Classically, once light interpreters are going to the acid, they cannot come back to infect this. But if entanglement doesn't exist, that doesn't matter the, 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 the order of the uh, sample. It only matter they, these two does interact through the laser. And this is what happened. Here is the graph. Again, the infect is small. And this is a control. You can see when the, 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 the sample it becomes more acidic. Here, if you see that, this thing, this setup, so the laser will go through sample first, then to the, uh, to the, to the acid. But the, the acid can come back and affect the sample. Okay, so, so this is a, so the, so you can expect this quantum ring can affect the, the expectation is it should, the water should become more acidic. This is what happens. All of the three parameters we use probably teach you that it's most unreliable. Once around, it's, it's very fickle. Okay, so it's not steady. You had to try, you know, try many times, make sure your condition is stable and right. But the effect is there. Uh, this is one more water experiment. This is really an anecdotal. We just have done a lot of experiment. What we did is instead of, um, you know, uh, Acid or free salt, we add substance. Split into two half. One you measure temperature change, the other you add substance. In this case, we add strong acid, strong chemical. So this is the overall background temperature. When you add acid, which produces strong heat in water, you see the little look. Then you add this is a, a potassium. I have a hard time pronounce it, but it again produces strong heat lines. Added to water. Now they find the same time we boil it on the stove. You see a little lifting of temperature. When the reverse arm is heating up, then sample also follows. It's like a stimulus. So this is anecdotal. I may not have, I cannot, we cannot conclude say it's there, but this, I'm just showing uh, the, the anecdotal results. Okay, so let me want to talk about how we can reconcile the non local effect. We observe the, in these experiments. By the way, I know a lot of authors, I mean, speakers here have brilliant ideas of, we just forget about Einstein relativity, right? Because it's a theory. And so, what we're trying, we take baby steps, we try to work, we cannot totally throw away the mainstream thing, and it's a, uh, how should I say, so we prefer to work, take baby steps to, uh, to, uh, to reconcile the empirical data and the theory. So how, this is how we uh, try to reconcile. So one thing that we really interpret the Iraq equation, I mean, I'm, I'm about physicist, so if I'm wrong, please correct me. Iraq equation is the most fundamental equation uh, in physics. Now, I mean, I call this as God equation, but I guess because the universe, uh, relationship of Euler number, pi, and imaginary number uh, equal to one. That's in common, folk, I mean, folklore is called God, but this is, I will show you, I hope I have time. This is, if you, if there is an unmoved moor, that's called the God equation. I think many of you would agree with me. So we really interpreted this equation, fundamentally, in a new framework. The model is called pre state type model. The lofty name we give is the principle of existence because it deals with, say, there, you know, Big Bang. Before Big Bang, what's there? So these are metaphysical issues. But uh, to have a truly unified theory of everything, we have to include how the universe is created, how our mind works. Otherwise, it's not unified. You can claim, but it's not. But that's not the, the, the mystery, it's our mind. I constantly joke with people, where our salt comes from? So, I mean, that, that's another story. So this is the framework we use. And here is the three papers we published. You know, that, you know, so we founded this journal. Actually, we found this three more journals. Uh, you can find our website. This is one of them. Free space journal. It has been going strong for 10 years now. So these are the articles. 
disability. Okay, this is a diagram of how we reconcile the pandemic, the, the conflict of actual distance and gender relativity. Now I'm going to show you an equation later for the mathematical plan. Here's the diagram. So the Dirac equation actually there are two, two uh, it's a bi-span, there's a two, there's a spanner with positive energy in the Dirac form, okay? Then there's another, another spanner with a negative energy. So, so the Dirac equation is a bi-spanner. So in our framework, the extern the positive spanner is the external world. Negative spanner uh, in the DRP equation, because there are four components, uh, is, is the internal world. Now, when the two components interact by itself in the DRP equation, we call it cell, it's, you know, cell interaction in the DRP equation, or cell gravity. So we have, so there's another Fermi, this with the cell interaction with DRP equation. Then when they interact with each other through electromagnetic field, in the say external, this is a deep, so this is a priest time, this whole thing. So there, in this domain, in this domain you know, you can call, to us it's a real entity that exists, but uh, you know, uh, even metaphysical. So what, what happens is, it's there. It, within this free space time, you have created space and time. So I, but I just draw a straw, strap here showing free space time. So now, why the two, two entities interact in the external world? They, they're subject to speed limitation. But when they self interact, uh, when they interact with each other through pre space time, so they interact external world, internal world through pre space time, this is called gravity or quantum gravity, quantum entanglement. They're instant thing. They don't, because they're in pre space time, the concept of space time does not apply. Of course, I mean, we came out of this, tried to explain what we have found as experiment. Here's then a drawing of similar, same, same diagram, basically here you. So this is the external wave function, internal wave function, the DRP equation under the wave one. And here is the, uh, the, uh, the operators acting on uh, external, internal wave function. Here's another entity. And the, these two interact through DRP equation here. And uh, these two entities interact through the uh, four the four potential four magnetic potential electric potential magnetic potential. This is how they how they interact between that. And I, I done some calculation. Basically, you know, I think one time in principle show through this uh, electromagnetic field interaction, these two entities can get entangled. In, in literature, it's shown pure stack model. You just you put up a paper. You put up a Hamiltonian, right? You write heuristic interaction between two spins, but they should be able to be I mean, derived from uh, it's called the uh, uh, first principle here. So let me spend five minutes to uh, uh, show you the mathematics here. Okay, the free space time model is it tries to make a connection between standard model and what's between Big Bang happen. So let's assume there is a Big Bang. So this would be the connection between standard model and big bang, because standard model deals with interaction. Does not tell you how particles are created. I'm going to briefly run this quick. You can find all this on my our website. So we, we talk about other numbers today, uh, mood, right? Now, so I'm going to metaphysically speak here. So we use. Mover, uh, Euler number representing ether. This is okay. At the beginning, there is only one. Okay, there is no differentiation. These are we call it phase dis uh, differentiation. There is only the unmoved mover. He has the ether body represented by all powerful Euler number here mathematically. He has salt, which is imag his imagination. And here he has no content. His brain has got the unmoved mover. The salt has not started. So. Once he starts thinking, going through this process, he can create both the law governing the quantum entity and the quantum entity itself. Actually, you can go through it mathematically. I call this mathematical aerobatics because I'm not a mathematician. But you can go from here to here. 
in this, this is equal to one because this part this is Einstein's this is Einstein's uh, uh, the, uh, the energy and momentum of famous relation and this here is the phase differentiation here would produce a law this would produce one entity now the, the creative step here is here this equation you can draw from here take the Einstein's energy related modulation and this the invariant quantity in, in relativity, you know, this, this for position for momentum uh, is a constant in, in relativity. So these are at zero. You can come here easily. So the creative step is that God to create this, I'm, forgive me, I backtrack. The unknown world created our universe, all its elementary particles, all photon, all, uh, all photons, all those on with or without mass, including neutrino that through this process, okay? Uh, let's let's just call it mathematical arrogance, okay? So then you mention like this here, you can easily come up here to here. This would be the unspin equation. <coughs> we actually have an article on this. This could be related to the Higgs boson itself, okay? So if you spin if you take this also, out, you know, out, out, under the square, you give it a spin. This is your, this is your Dirac equation. This is your Dirac equation in Dirac form, not, <coughs> not the well form. Okay. Going through the similar process, you can create it. You can create a photon. Same process. Okay. This is a photon. This with the uh, no, no divergence of the magnetic field. Electric field method, they, they combine in the Maxwell equation. Okay, so uh, I don't think I had time to go through this, but I'm going to make this uh, available to, to you all. Oh, uh, let me just go to the, let me just go to the uh, summary so we can have half time to at least get all that. I saw that I can go through one. I thought I can go through one slide a minute. I'm wrong. <laughs> so, our results is as well. The weight of water in detecting reservoir pumping angle with the water in reverse reservoir can change against gravity of its local environment. One larger than the other. Temperature, pH, similarly can change this way. And so, we say slightly we have realized non local signaling. You know using these parameters. And uh, of course, to this conference, most important things, we, I think we provide some evidence to Newton's uh, instantaneous gravity and math principle. Uh, thank you very much. OK, thank you very much. Uh, so are there any questions or comments? So could you show these uh, Einstein's equations, which were some three, four slides? Ah, oh, so, yeah, there are some uh, yeah, so few slides. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. so, this is your expertise. Yeah. I'm amateur, okay, so let me show you what I was trying to do. You, you, okay, yeah. you gave me, you gave me a time on the time then. So yeah. what are we trying to do is we're, okay, let me come here. You see, this is long, this is going to be long. Okay, so what happened if you take, uh, so in our framework, uh, quantum entanglement, okay, actually is the, the gravity is macroscopic uh, uh, manifestation of quantum entanglement. So to to relate quantum entanglement, actually, Ruder, one of the author talked about the uh, this right before me about how he derived the g force from the probability actually to take the gradient divided. Uh, did not take. So you had to. To make a connection from uh, uh, our theory to uh, to general relativity, right? You had to somehow connect the Ricci scalar and the magic tensor to the wave function. So, so what we did here, so that we, so we assume under this framework, the Ricci scalar and the magic tensor are nothing but the, it's the collective uh, effect of the wave function, and this is similar to. Someone talk about this. Uh, so here coming to your. So here's what happened is, in this theory, 
You see, the Maxwell equation itself I already showed you self gravity or self self interaction. I mean, we all know in, in the electric field, magnetic field, they all drive. You can the time change of the uh, the, uh, the, the, the 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 magnet for uh, uh, the the vector is the electrical field. Then the curve change of the magnetic potential is is the magnetic field. So magnetic field. They they don't need this each other. They always one one change the other way always there. Their relationship in synchronicity or same is instantaneous. So this is one way I try to explain. So that's they're self entangled. They're self entangled. Okay. What I'm trying to show here is that the I'm this this these are well known. I'm just trying to point out this action this action principle can be interpreted. Seen from the new framework. In this framework, if this is action, this is the you know the matrix, the the, the rich scale, the magic tensor. This portion, the magnetic field in the under background of the magic tensor. Of course, if you vary the magic tensor, you get the field equation for for the electromagnetic field. Now, here is what I'm trying to show. Of course, you vary the for potential, you, you, you would get Maxwell equation. Now, this they done a lot of interesting longer and another observation shown. Actually, this equation already contains already contains Maxwell equation uh, here. The reason is that the the all the uh, its paper directly that the reason that the 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 Magic tensor and its richness can all be expressed in terms of the four, the different components of the four potential. Okay, clear. I'm the point here is in as far as as far as uh, the electro, I mean electromagnetic field and generates come, they are already unified. You know, based on this new understanding. That's what the matter. Okay, thank you. So we have time for one or more questions. So please. Oh, very much. Uh, what are you doing is uh, very good for me. Uh, I know this. Oh, okay. Here is a, I can show you a special device also. This oh, okay. Which has two uh, chips which produces a special <coughs> uh, They call it inertial field. Yes. They produce it like that. And for a change uh, blood, in particular, it becomes not uh, like liquid, but uh, like a uh, gel. And in this case, electromagnetic radiation that comes to me, to my body, is not strongly influenced me. Yes. And many, many interesting aspects, and I appreciate your activity because you show that uh, a, a microscopic bodies can be entangled with this device for a long time. So that is why I support you very seriously. So you're saying it can produce real biological effect? Zero uh, quantum yeah. yeah. Okay, so what are you saying? Several questions, but um, okay. you, you showed the picture with the yeah, corner of the head, yeah. which is very interesting. Yeah. And the other question I have is you showed uh, temperature variation one thousandth of the degree. Oh, no. How, that's how that's did that's you stabilize your measuring system and your room temperature on a thousandth? It's a here it means Celsius, temperature varying Celsius, but amplified by a thousand times. Now the so the, the real effect is only in the range of 0 0.00. Exactly. Yes. So how did you stabilize your room temperature or your system? Oh, we, we used uh, uh, in a basement temperature. I mean, this is you buy, you know, for experiments you wouldn't know. Okay. You, you buy, you first put your equipment in a non-vibrating uh, environment and also isolated. You know, try to be as stable as possible. But then, I show you the real instrument. You know, if you do control, it have a smooth line. I mean, that's based on fact. You would say, well, if it could be like, you know, changing, have a lot of randomness. No. The only way to find out is by, you know, you repeat your, you know, nobody can repeat my experiment. You know. The last question, my professor, uh, thank you for a very nice, interesting talk. I just have uh, a question for my curiosity. I get involved in some group of people who are interested in measurement of water properties during the sun eclipse. Okay. <laughs> and, and it's all just for fun. That's, I'm not saying that I understand that, but uh, my question
question is whether you would expect some changes on the you know physical chemical properties of water during the sun period. Yes, that's what we have seen. Should you know they? Yeah, it's not astrology. Yeah, astrology is based on movement of stars changing people's mood. Yes, you are. I'm. I'm positive it should have effect. Uh, and I can tell you that we have measured the water conductivity and surface tension. Uh, and there is okay, a strong yeah. correlation. Surface tension, I don't know, but we tried. Uh, actually, we, we tried high precision uh, conductivity meter. Oh. Nothing. I mean, no. I cannot observe anything. But then we were at the water conference last year and uh, gave a speech and there are some people they show uh, I can email you oh, the, 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 the interaction of uh, people's thoughts with water can change its conductivity but they have run multiple multiple uh, you know like the hydro, hydro large hydro plant you have multiple over to see little bound when you see that's exposed <laughs> you had they run multiple they were able to see but you're exactly right. I mean, uh, oh, I, I want to thank you in person again because you were not here. And I also miss your talk. I made so, such a hard <coughs> effort to try to get your first talk. I missed, but I will find your talk. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.